Question 25 in the Book of Questions. For an all-expense-paid one-week vacation, that's American for holiday, anywhere in the world, would you be willing to kill a beautiful butterfly by pulling off its wings? What about stepping on a cockroach? There's a supplementary uh, question at the back, which I'll get to in a moment. No, I'll, I'll get to it straight away. Um, I think it's true. Uh, why does a beautiful creature merit more compassion than an ugly one? Well, I don't know that it does, but that's a bit of an assumption on the question asker. Does it damage us psychologically when we destroy something we find beautiful? Uh, how meaningful is the difference between pulling the wings off an insect and stepping on it? Is the decision of how to kill something uh, a minor decision when balanced against the decision of whether or not to kill it at all? Uh, okay, so stepping on a cockroach. I think society generally approves of that, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a cockroach. There are loads of them. They're horrible. Uh, they're the filthy things. They scuttle about. You try to keep them out of houses. They're pests. Step on them. Uh, although not, I wouldn't, barefoot. Yet yeah, shoes. In fact, clogs. In fact, clogs and skis. Um, okay, well, let's imagine that stepping on a cockroach, that's pretty instantly fatal. That thing is dead. Uh, pulling the wings off a butterfly, um, I don't know necessarily that would kill it instantly. If it did kill it instantly, then that's sort of all right, because surely it's the instantness of the, the, the kill that is... Uh, connected most directly to cruelty. Um, if it's more cruel to kill it by some other way, then maybe, yes, it does make a difference. Although I would argue that you can't really be cruel to a pencil. Um, you can't be cruel to a pencil because a pencil is not conscious and has no ability to appreciate that you're being cruel to it. Therefore, you can do whatever you like to a pencil and possibly a butterfly, because I have no reason whatever to believe that there is any glimmer of consciousness, as a human understands it, um, in a butterfly. Now, obviously, a butterfly can react to stimuli. Uh, it, its eyes can detect uh, light in some direction, and this might cause it to fly one way rather than the other. It responds. But the idea that something is conscious just because it has uh, detectors and responses to things that it detects is a bit daft. I mean, by that argument, a burglar alarm is conscious because it it detects a door having been opened or whatever, and <gasps> it's alarmed and goes ding 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 ding. <gasps> but we don't ascribe consciousness to a burglar alarm, and similarly, I don't think we should ascribe consciousness to anything in the insect world. Indeed, I've seen um, insects get caught in a sort of logic loop. I, I saw this uh, amazing film of a, a hunting wasp, and it had gone away from its burrow, and it had killed a, a locust, and then brought it back to the burrow, and it flew down to the hole, and it put the locust down. And then what it might do is put the locust in the hole, lay eggs on it, and put a little stone on the top, and then the eggs uh, hatch out into larvae. They have something to eat. It's young, have uh, this great start in life with a, a big bit of prey for them to eat, and so they then uh, turn into adult wasps, and then they leave the nest, and that is the life cycle. But there's a problem with that, which is that sometimes something might hide at the bottom of a wasp's hole and wait for the wasp to put the food in, and then it lays eggs, and, and, and then the, the wasp lays the eggs, and the thing that's hiding in the bottom of the hole eats the eggs and the prey. Brilliant. So, evolution had programmed a behaviour into this particular species of wasp. The wasp would put down the locust, check in the hole, go down in the hole to make sure that nothing else had got in there and was hiding, and then, having checked, it would then put the locust in, put the stone on top, uh, lay the eggs, put the stone on top. Right. Brilliant. So what the experimenters did is they had a pair of long pair of tweezers. They waited for the wasp to land. It would put the locust next to the hole. The wasp would then go into the hole, and the experimenter would then, with the tweezers, presumably so that you don't, you don't impart any smell or anything, uh, it would just move the locust just one foot away from the hole. The wasp would then come out and then fly around, up, find the locust. The locust must have just blown away from the hole in the wind. It would just be the wind, something like that. Find the locust, and then check, bring it to the hole, check in the hole that nothing is in the hole, and then the experiment would move the locust again, and it would fly, fly around, find the locust again, bring it to the hole, check in the hole. Every single time it would check in the hole, even though it has just checked in the hole. Thing is, though, that the wasp had no inkling of why it was checking in the hole. It just had an instinct, an, an instinct, an evolved instinct to check in the hole. And it doesn't matter how many times you move the locust away from the hole, the, the wasp will check this hole that it's already checked loads of times. But 
it didn't learn and it had no inkling of what, if it knew why it was checking in the hole, then it wouldn't check in the hole again. If it were conscious in the way that a human is, it wouldn't do that, but it got caught in this behavioral loop. And yes, some modern science has suggested that insects do have some learning capacity, but that still doesn't require consciousness. You can have extremely complicated behaviors uh, without consciousness. So anyway, that was a very long digression to the idea that I don't think that actually uh, a butterfly is conscious. So uh, even though sensors might sense, oh, my wings are coming off, oh, that's not good. Um, it's not suffering in the way that a human can suffer. Um, so in that sense, um, the difference in this context doesn't make much difference, but in the, something that, that's uh, much, much uh, higher up the, um, the sophistication scale, like a dog or whatever, you, could, you can be cruel to a dog. Um, so is the decision of how to kill something a minor decision when balanced against the decision of whether or not to kill it at all? Well, it, in the case uh, of this question, is a couple of insects, and I think I've answered that one, uh, but with something uh, that, that can appreciate cruelty, um, then yes, it, 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 it is a more minor factor because suffering is not as bad as death if the alternative to death is life and not suffering. Uh, that's a bigger difference. So, um, yeah, it's comparatively minor. Um, uh, beautiful creature, ugly. Right, well, we, we have uh, light, um, sanction from humanity, don't we, to, to step on cockroaches. Um, and actually, we kill quite a lot of butterflies. I mean, there are a lot of butterfly collections around the world. I know it's not a, 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 a mainstream or hobby as it used to be, but there are plenty of people who clearly loved butterflies and would collect them because they're beautiful. Now, there's nothing in the question that says that this butterfly is rare. If it were one of the last breeding pair in the world, wow, that's a big difference. But no, there's nothing in this. Uh, most butterflies uh, exist in, in profusion. And um, uh, though there are some rare species, um, there's nothing of that in the question. So I think it's perfectly reasonable to imagine it's like many other insects in that there are loads of them. In fact, so far as I know, uh, humans have not made a single species of insect extinct. Yes, we've, we've hunted birds and mammals uh, to extinction and maybe some fish, but um, so far we haven't managed to pull that feat off with, uh, with insects. So I would say that my killing this one butterfly is actually a pretty insignificant uh, act, ecologically speaking. But it doesn't end quite there, does it? Because it would seem from everything that I've said so far that the answer is, yeah, yeah, I'd pull the wings off it, kill the butterfly and go on that brilliant holiday. But then there's that sort of weird artificialness of this question, because this is a really extreme situation, isn't it? Why is someone offering this really big prize, but you have to pull the wings off a butterfly to get it? How can it be worth that big prize to them? What do they want? Now, presumably I have to prove that I've done it. I can't just say, oh yeah, I did it, uh, the butterfly's dead. Anyway, holiday now, brilliant. Um, they have to know for certain that I have done it. Perhaps they, they want video proof and then they might show the whole world. Well, well, look what Lloyd is prepared to do. You know, I offer him this week's holiday you know, he, he could possibly have afforded a holiday of some sort that would have been perfectly fine himself. But oh no, to get this glamorous holiday uh, for himself, selfishness, selfishness, he did this despicable act. Look, everyone, look all those millions of people in the world who will be horrified by the thought of someone pulling the wings off a poor defenseless butterfly. Oh, it's so pretty. That he's got, I don't know, some sort of blackmail footage. I mean, I just think, why on earth would anyone offer that bigger prize f for that weird task and, and why doesn't he if, if he needs the wings pulling off a butterfly and it's that important to him why doesn't he pull them off himself um this uh the if this actually happened in reality i think the answer is no because i think what the hell and what would people think of me blah, 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 blah. but if uh we go into the fantasy world of for some reason, you live in a world in which you kill a butterfly, you get a holiday, and, and that's sort of normal. I'd go, yeah, it's only one butterfly. <laughs>